one are you asking me about now? Twelve. Um, are you you asking me about the relationship between? Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, listen. I'm not gonna make it like this on your test because I think it's kind of silly. But basically, what they're saying is any two lines, any three lines that aren't parallel can be considered a transversal and could be considered the two lines that the line intersects. All right, so now what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna to try to show you what six and 18. So here is angle six right here, and here is 18 right here. So now you gotta watch me for a quick second. Please look up on the board, all right? Look up so I can try to show you something, all right? To me, that's a dumb question. It's not <coughs> obvious even. And I actually wouldn't expect you to know this, all right? Especially after today's lesson. But now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw this line right here. And then what I'm going to do, that's another reason why I like the notability, is because now, hold on one second. That allows me to do this. And now you can clearly see that those are corresponding angles. You see what I'm trying to show you? Yeah. Oh, hold on. Yeah. No, no, no. I, 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 here's, listen. Listen now. Visualize with me. I'm not wrong. You're wrong. All right? Listen to what I'm saying. All right? I'm not going to put that on the test because I just simply think that's a dumb question. But what they're trying to get you to understand, it doesn't matter what three lines. You just have two lines, and the third one intersects those two. Right, so this line, what I did was I rotated it so my eyes could see that this right here is corresponding to that right there. Yeah. Did you look at it like line D? Like, is that so correct if you like had like line D and then it was like because one's on the outside and then it's like one in the middle? Yes, and some people can visualize that fine. Yeah. To me, I I'm yeah. just not very good at it. Okay. All right, so when I see those, and I'm telling you. Never had a geometry question if I had something like that. All right, they're just trying to make sure that you understand that two lines in a transversal don't mean that the lines are automatically parallel. All right, but today I said we're going to assume that they what are now parallel. All right, and it's very easy, and we did this in at the end of sixth grade math, so it should be just kind of a quick review. All right, so let's look at fourteen now. So now I have to erase, obviously. Let me let me go back here. And now I'm going to highlight 11 and 7. So here is 7 and here is 11, right? So now I can say that's consecutive interior. But again, it's not obvious until I take line A, right? And I take that now, and you can see if I swing it this way, now it's easier to see that those are consecutive interior. That makes sense, right? And like I said, I'm not going to do that on the test. They're, they're going to be parallel lines. Or if they're not, the, the worst it'll be would be something like this. Does that make sense yeah. now, right? I, I'm just not going to do three lines like this and say, what's this relationship to this over here? It just doesn't, it, it's just, it's pointless because there really and truly isn't a relationship between those two, all right? That's it, because they're not either congruent or supplementary. That's what the lesson is for today. They're congruent and supplementary, quickly. What do you mean it's easy to see? Like, how, how do you know that? Like, when I look at that, I feel like it's X2. Yes, and, and again, let me, let me try to explain why. Let me try to, let me, because again, I, I do totally understand what you're seeing, but I would like for you to see what I'm saying because I think it's kind of important, but I'm just telling you the, the, there's no questions on the exam like that. All right, so what we're looking at is 11 and 7. So what I'm trying to show you is this line right here, this line right here, and this line right here is what's important. Do you agree? So what I'm doing is I'm going to take this line right here and I'm going to adjust it so your eyes can see what I see. You with me? Now, does it change the figure when I adjust it? Yes. The angles change, but 
the fact that they are alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding or vertical doesn't change. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch this this way. I'm, I'm rotating it that way. You see that? Oh, no. Now you can, to me, now. my brain can easily see that those are consecutive interior. You with me on that? Oh, so that's right. That's exactly right. So you can now draw this and see, and that was actually a very good way of saying it. This right here and this right here form a relationship with these. You with me on that? And what messes everything up? What messes everything up is this guy right here. Yes, that messes everything up. You good on that? Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's, it, they're doing it just to make it difficult, and I just wouldn't do that. All right? I think everybody here knows corresponding. I think you know the rules now. All right? So now let's just go on to, to for today's lesson, all right, which is uh, 3.2. All right, and now something that I think you already know, but we're just going to, we're just going to verify. <clears throat> it says, when uh, two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, all right, these are always what? They're always congruent. All right, now we're going to start proving them, I think, next week. All right, we're going to prove them all next week. But right now, we're just going to practice some algebra. It's very easy. All right, so I have, um, I have the corresponding angles are congruent. Alternate interior angles are congruent, and alternate exterior angles are congruent. And what I normally tell kids is look over here. All right? This is angle one is obtuse, correct? Angle five is obtuse. Seven is obtuse, and three is obtuse. All obtuse angles are what? Congruent. And all what? Acute angles are congruent. So from that... I would just mark this figure this way, this, 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 this. So all obtuse angles are congruent, all acute angles are congruent, and if you have an obtuse and acute, what's probably true? They, make they equal 180 or they're supplementary. Perfect. That's how simple this is. That's how simple. I always used to tell kids, look, even if you don't remember the rules, you ought to be able to say that's obtuse and that's obtuse. They have to be what? Equal. Right? Acute and obtuse can't be equal. So they must be supplementary. But they must be supplementary only if the lines are what? Parallel. That doesn't hold true if the lines are not parallel. Yes. Yes. And you could call vertical angles congruent. Right? Like two and four, six and eight. All right? So there is a relationship between two and six. Two and six are corresponding. Yes, you're right. They are congruent. One and five are corresponding. Four and six are alternate interior. One and seven are alternate exterior. You should be just completely uh, good with the vocabulary. All right? On all of those words. All right? Yes. You just have to assume that those lines are parallel. Well, they have to tell you that they're parallel. Like, what are those big... Like the arrow. That that is the symbol, believe it or not, for parallel. And the second one, there's two. Oh, because that's the same. This this right here. No, in the second uh, figure, the next oh. one, because there's two different parallel pairs. So go on. Very good. So on this figure here, those are parallel, and then these are two marks, right? But I'll mark it like this. I won't fill it in. All right. That is just be the arrow showing that they're parallel. And obviously, two marks are to distinguish between what two are parallel. All right? So, again, um, very, very, very simple. Very simple. All right? Now let's drop down to the exercises here real quick. And, again, here is what I used to tell my kids first is um, I would say to them, if the measure of angle 3 is 102, I'm just going to write 102 down for the measure of angle three. So this over here, angle three is 
102 degrees. Is everybody happy with that? Come on, listen. Just listen. Let me get through it. That's 102. Now, I don't do anything else from there. Right? I can come up with all of the all of the missing angles. All right? So right off the bat, I would say automatically that angle one is what? 102. Angle five is what? 102. And angle seven is what? 102. And then the rest are what? 78 degrees, 78 degrees, 78 degrees, 78 degrees. Anybody have any issue with that? All right. Now, because this is parallel, that was easy. All right. Now what you have to understand is watch and make sure you see what I'm seeing. This over here, this parallel and the transversal creates the same thing. Do I agree with that? So everything's either what? 102. 102 or 78. All of the obtuse angles are going to be what? 102. And all the acute are? 78. That's how simple today's lesson is. So again, 78, 78, 78, 78, 102, 102, 102, and 102. That's how simple it is. Yeah, we're going to we're going to do the proofs absolutely. And since some of you guys are asking me about it, I may just go ahead and, and uh, do the proof for you. It's really simple, really really simple. All right. Um, now let's go down to the next one. Now we have some problems on the next one because is uh, or I should say P and Q are they parallel? No, no, they're not parallel. All right, they're not parallel. But again, it's still very simple. It's very simple. So in this case, we're going to say measure of angle 9 is what? 80, 80. Measure of angle 9 is 80. So I'm going to put an 80 degrees right there. And then it says measure of angle 5 is 68. All right, now what I want to do is I want to make this perfectly clear. All right? All, listen to me. All of these angles right here have a relationship with 80. These over here have no relationship with 80 whatsoever. Everybody with me on that? Yeah. There's no relationship. There's no relationship because P and Q are not what? They're, parallel. They're not parallel which is why kids make a mistake on the test. And some kids miss every single one. Because if you don't see the right relationship, you're going to miss them all. So that's why I'm saying your eyes should be looking at that, saying for 1, 2, 3, 4, 9, 10, 11, and 12, all the acute angles are what? And all the obtuse are what? That's how simple it is. That's how simple. All right. Now, for everything um, that's circled in green, all acute angles are going to be what? And all obtuse are going to be 112. Everybody happy with that? Anybody have any questions? And you guys can fill that in. I don't need to put all that in. Right? Now, again, honestly, though, listen to me. You see how these right here come from this over here, right? So to me, it would just be easier for you. I don't care if you put the answers next to 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. You agree with me? You see what I'm saying? I, I, I would prefer that you just write them right on the figure. And if you write them right on the figure, then you've answered every single possible question. All right, to me, it was easier to do it that way than to specifically find which one they're asking for. All right, did everybody see that? And that's how I teach kids on the SAT also. Just answer all of the angles. All right, sometimes it's easier to do that than to specifically find one that they want you to. Quit. Uh, it says to tell like what posture they're in. Okay, so you would say, listen, there is one postulate, and the postulate is corresponding angles are congruent. So what does that basically mean? We can't what? Prove it. We have to accept that it's true. 
And if we draw parallel lines and we use a transversal and we measured it, it would always come out to be what? Congruent. All right, because that's not a proof. A proof is when you prove it for all possibilities, not just one. It appears like it's always true. All right, so that's why it's called a postulate, because we're just basing our statement off of some observation. Does that make sense? Now, to prove the other ones, alternate interior angles are congruent, we can prove that. Often the exterior angles, we can prove. Consecutive interior, we can prove are supplementary. However, how do you think we prove that they're congruent? We use the fact that we know corresponding angles are congruent. All right, again, you see how that's kind of uh, a little strange. We can't prove corresponding are congruent, but yet in our proof, for alternate interior angles, we use corresponding angles. Everybody see that? Yeah. All right, that's what I had the biggest problem with my geometry. So you guys, I trust me, I know exactly what you mean. Or it doesn't make sense that we can't prove corresponding. So we're proving alternate interior angles by using corresponding angles. Does everybody agree with me on that? All right, it's a very easy proof, and we're going to do all the proofs next week. I just want to get through this. All right, now the next, all right? Now it's just a matter of we're just practicing some algebra, which is very important, all right? So the algebra we are uh, checking here, all right? What's true about, and again, they make figures because it kind of is harder to see, all right? But what's true about this angle and this angle. They're congruent. Those are the what? Corresponding angles. Can we agree with that? So off to the side, well, I would expect everybody here to just say x equals what? 15. Does everybody practice looking that saying that x equals 15? Your teacher next year will go, oh my gosh, you're the smartest kid in the world. That's right. Everybody see that, right? X yeah. equals 15. Yeah. If you're uncomfortable with that, write 5x minus 5 equals 4x plus 10. Write that down. But what I want you to do now is you're practicing. Can you manipulate the numbers so you can see that x is 15? Is everybody happy with that? So I have x equals 15. Now that x equals 15, how do I figure out what y is? Go ahead. Uh, just take, it should be, you plug it in for x. Yes. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Help me out. How did you get 20 again? I thought X was 15. Oh, 15, yeah, 15. So does that be uh, 25 minus 5 is 70? Yes, yeah, so this angle right here is actually 70. Yeah, and then the other angle beneath it would just be 80 and 70. Very good. Is everybody happy with that explanation? So, right. So then you add 4, right? Yeah. And so Y is equal to? And what did you get? Y equals 19. Yes, ma'am. Are those two angles, angles supplementary? Yes. Like yes, this is a linear pair, remember? You, you and me? All right. So let's check out number two. All right. Because these are parallel, what does 3y plus 18 have to equal? 90. 90, right? Now let me show you something right here, because 3y plus 18 equals 90. So instead of subtracting 18, guys, look. Yeah, practice, doing it quickly. Dividing by 3 is better. All right? So now I have what? Y plus 6 equals 30, so y is what? Y is 24. Everybody happy with that? All right. Now we have an obtuse, and we have a what? Acute, so they must they must equal 180. So your job here is to say 25x plus 30 equals what? 180. So from there, I think we can say is it 
Six or five? Six. six yeah. Five. One fifty. How many quarters make a dollar fifty? Six. Everybody good? What? What's ten plus fifteen? You good? Yeah. All right. So again, just have to be careful. Just be careful. All right. Let's take a look now at question number three. So again, what's the relationship? Yes, 11, I mean, 16x plus 4 equals? 9, 18y, Thank you, 180. You agree with that? Again, these right here. Right? How do we learn how to solve this? Well, we already do know how to do that. But is that right? X equals 11? Oh, yeah. I, uh, X equals 11? All right. Next one. Here we go. What do I have here? 18Y equals 180. So to me, Y is equal to what? Y is equal to 10. Pretty easy. Everybody good? All right. So now, um, here we go. Let's look at four. Y equals 30. Well, what's the relationship here now? Help me out with this relationship. A little bit different. Uh, what's true about this angle right here yeah. and this angle right yeah. here? They're congruent. They're congruent. Because they are called what? Oh, alternate. Yes. Interior. Alternate interior oh, angles. Those are alternate interior angles. Can we go with that? Yeah. Okay. All right. So now I have alternate interior angles. I have 2x equals 20, right? So I think x is 10. Is everybody okay with that? I'm listening to you. What? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so here I'm going to help you. All right, watch what my uh, help is for today. Oh, I turned my head. Hold on. This right here. Most of the time, I tell kids if you extend the lines. Oh, that's it. Yeah. If you extend the lines, all right. You can see the alternate interior angles a little bit better. You see that now? Yeah. Right? Everybody happy with that? Yeah. Right? So that's why sometimes when you see shapes, it looks awkward and you can't quite see it. I promise you, if you extend the lines, you can see the transversal and the parallel lines a little bit easier. All right? So what do we say X was? 10. 10, right? So that means now that this angle right here is 30. So hold on. That angle is 30, right? So I still don't know how to figure out what um, I still don't know how to figure out what y is. How do I figure out what y is? Tell me. Um, 6x plus 30 equals 180 because the interior of the triangle adds up to it. Um, but wait a minute now. I'm not saying you're wrong, but tell me again what you're saying. Uh, to find y, 6x plus 30 equals 180. Yeah, I'm trying to. F six, Can I just have a conversation with him? Sorry, 6y plus 30 equals 180. All right, so we haven't really discussed this in, in this class, but he's 100% right. You should know the angles of a triangle add up to what? You should say the angles of a triangle add up to 180. So in this case, um, this is 30 right here. Do you agree? So you could say 6y plus 30 is equal to what? 180 and solve it that way, which is perfectly fine. I wouldn't have a problem with that. So even though it's like the transversal line with parallel yeah. lines, you would still use it as shape? Yeah, but, but now how they want you to do it, how they want you to do it, and try to listen to me now, they would want you to say this. All right, please pay attention. All right? They would want you to say this. This angle plus this angle add up to what? Add up to 180. Did everybody see that? Right. So again, it's not that you it's not that you can't use 
the sum of the angles of a triangle add up to 180. All right, it's the fact what? That we have consecutive interiors that are supplementary. So we would say 30 plus 6y is equal to 180. And what do you know? 6y equals 150. And that's actually how they prove the triangles add up to 180. Exactly what I just said. Right? It's the same as what he said. I'm not arguing with you. And believe it or not, that's how I'm going to try to show you that the sum of the interior angles of the triangle add up to 180 by using parallel lines. All right? That's how we actually prove that. Wait, so, so what's 150? It's 25. Yeah. You can just divide by Right. Okay. Is everybody happy with that? All right. So y is equal to 25. All right, let's move on. All right, find the value of the variables uh, in each figure. All right, same kind of principle here. So Y should be pretty easy, right? X should be pretty easy. All right, somebody tell me what Y is. Thirty. I think thirty-seven. Why? Because these two add up to what? 180, right? So you agree with that? So 2y is 74, so y is 37. All right. Now, x would be obvious. x is what? No, 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 no. You guys are killing me now. Come on, pay attention. Let's get through. We're almost done. All right. x is 74. Do you agree with that or not? Yes. Right? Now, again, in this case, this angle right here is 74. Do you agree? So then these two angles add up to what? 180. Or you could say 4z plus 6 is equal to 106. And so z is equal to 25. All right. Anybody have any questions or concerns with that? All right. All you're doing is you're just practicing knowing the relationships. All right, here we go. On this one now. All right, what's true about X and 2Y? They are definitely congruent. Alternate interior, exactly. All right, now we can easily figure out what X is, right? Because again, this right here is supplementary. They add up to 180. So what does x equal? I think x is 30. 3x, right? 3x plus 90 equals 180. So everybody happy with x equals 30? Yes. Right? Now, x is 30. All right, let's look back at the figure now. Let's break it down. So this is 30. So z automatically is 150, and you're right. Y was what? Y is 15. Now, to me, like I said, if you know the relationships, the problems are super simple. It's way easier on this. Right? Yeah. How do you know? Well, you have fun with the proofs next week. Yeah. How do I know what? Did you do the same thing you did on the other problem? Yeah. Or 2y? Yeah, 2y equals 30, right? Why? Alternate interior angles. Yeah. Right? Okay. Now. The other is just practice, guys. So you're responsible for the next two. All right. I'm, I'm probably going to take a look at this tomorrow. All right. So make sure you have everything done.